Solomon B. Taiwo grew up in East London on the same street as rap star Dizzy Rascal and with the same passion for music. But at the age of 19, he discovered acting and that became his ambition. His father didn't approve. They fell out and Solomon ended up homeless. This is the story of how he rebuilt his life and his relationship with his father without compromising on his dream. I was brought up in East London, um, same uh, basically the same road as Dizzy Rascal. So my early story is like, just that kid in the back of the room and um, wanting to be somebody. Um, success was part of my my path. And dry, I had a big drive. I, I used to lock myself in my room one time and just wish one day I have my own apartment and um, I, I was with the stars. But these days I was more into music. So I wanted to play perform with Neo, um, uh, like just like Usher, Michael Jackson. But I'm guessing um, everything diverted and now I'm in acting. Um, did you come from a wealthy background? Were you struggling? What sort of, what, what sort of life did you live? My parents were middle class, yeah. so they work extremely hard. Um, my mum was, uh, my mum is now a mental health nurse. Um, she's a manager and then my dad works for TfL. He, he drives the um, London Underground trains. Um, so they worked really, really hard for what they wanted. So it was in between, that depends. And what sort of group of friends did you have and what did you do with your time? Um, I, I did have one friend, actually. Um, like, we used to, like, we used to be in the studio all the time. I still speak to him now. And we used to, we used to make music um, at college. And I, I tried not to hang around certain people because when you hang around with certain people, they influence you to do certain things. And if I would have stayed with certain people, my career would have been where it was No, I can't talk for anyone. But, uh, um, <laughs> when did you decide to switch to acting as a goal then? I fell, I fell in love with acting. Like my friend introduced me to like, introduced me to like a, pro a production company or something like that. And um, from that day I was on set, um, I think I was on set one day, like uh, on set doing background work for um, Noel Clark. And I was like, oh gosh, this is what I want to do. Because like, it was so epic. Like, the way they set up, the way the 80s ran around, taking charge, and also um, the cameras they use, and also you got actors. I was like, whoa, mate, how do you do that? I fell in love with acting straight away. Like, and how old were you then? I was, I started late, so I was like 19. You know, I started very late. Um, I was 19 when I fell in love with acting. Um, since that day, like, I've done quite a few things. I've done reality TV. Um, and it's just slowly going into producing now. So it's just something I want to do. Music was something I wanted to do, but this is something I want to do. But So, well, I'm guessing it, it comes with a package because you still need to play music. It's musical theatre. Yeah, and um, you struggled, obviously. Um, and you ended up on the, the streets, am I right? So what was the story behind that? I became homeless because of my career path. With this career, it, there's a lot of tension. Um, at the start, you don't make money. So like, I was, uh, it got to a point where me and my father didn't get along and we split up from there. Meaning like, I became like, <laughs> the loneliest of the loneliest, but I still had my mum. Did he not agree with your choice of career? Was that the issue? He didn't agree with it. Yeah. I'm guessing, like, I understand why now, but like, he didn't believe that you could make income. Yeah. You know, like every father, they just want the best for their son, right? He, and he worked very hard in a regular job and he wanted you to do a similar sort of thing, but you didn't want to do that. Yeah, that's true. He worked really hard um, in a regular job. Um, he uh, actually he won quite a few awards for what he's doing. So I'm guessing he he believed that I could do um, exactly what he done. But don't get me wrong, I did have interviews exactly what he done. And I did, I, I had a few interviews. I, uh, I had a regular job, but it didn't work for me. The stress levels were uncopable. Mm. And um, in this career, you have to be stress relief because mm. you can't do it. You need to be stress relieved. You need to have your own mindset. So that's the reason why we didn't get along. But now we get along now. But mm. before it was, there was a lot of attention. There was a lot of tension. Like it, you could cut it with a knife, to be honest. So you left home in order to pursue your career. Yes. Of but you didn't have another home to go to. No, no. 
So I where worked did on you the live? For London. You you lived on the streets. Yeah, I lived on the streets and I worked on the streets for London. That's where I found I have a greater mentality. Is it? Describe your first night. I mean, how does it work? It's timing. Bus, buses. Mm. It's like you got to time everything. From when you work, like the thing is like it's communication. Um, first night was more networking. Network with the right people because once you're on the streets, you don't want to go in that direction. You know what I mean? Because you could stay in that direction if, you, if you're not careful. So, but what I do is I'll network with like like my friend like Sammy. He worked in McDonald's, so because I was working for the main clubs. We would finish, and we go to Sammy, and Sammy would say, "Oh, we've got burgers left." What do you mean, working in nightclubs? You yeah. were working in nightclubs, doing so what? On the streets of nightclubs, um, promoting nightclubs. Mm. That's how I survived. Mm. That's how I made money. Um, and then eventually, what will happen after I speak to Sammy? I go to sleep on the buses until the next morning. And how long did you have to do that for? For like a year and something. And as you say, the the secret is not slipping into the world where a lot of homeless people end up drinking and doing drugs and stuff because and just lying on the street because yeah. that leads to the hopelessness but you never you never even came close to that no I didn't I never came close to that um because that's not what I wanted to do like I, I wasn't intentionally homeless you know what I mean like this is the career I want to go into so w when I became homeless I had a goal in mind mm. the problem is when your goal dies you slowly adapt to what's in your surroundings. I didn't want that. So I work extremely hard to get my butt off yeah. <laughs> the streets because the thing is, the thing is like, like it, it, on the streets, it, it can get really hard. You know what I mean? Because if you don't know what you're doing, um, if you don't have a family around you, like if your family, if you're in trouble with your family. So like, I went for a phase where I slept on the buses. I went for a phase where I asked my friends for how um, can I sleep in their houses, and they said no. Um, so I couldn't do nothing. All I could do is um, put up with what I have, uh, what I had right in front of me, and that is being a promoter, sleeping on the buses, and just eating McDonald's with my friend. So how did you make the transition from promotion in nightclubs to acting? I ah, so so basically. After a year, I got, I got um, a rented apartment, eventually. And from there, um, I started going to a lot of, um, a lot of small things. Then eventually, um, I got a casting, like someone casted me for a reality TV, which that was paid, was really good. So I used that, um, I saved that up, and then eventually, um, things started coming in. I, I had auditions for, um, I had auditions for like small roles, and then eventually I got my agent. But it was like, uh, it, once you do something with, uh, on a success route, a landslide. It's like that, honestly. Like, from the start, you start a little bit bitter. You start a little bit, oh, oh I, I can't get up there. Oh, my gosh, what's going to happen to me? You know what I mean? And eventually, when you gradually, like, it's just basically the same story of the alchemist. That's what I, I, I plant my life on. You know what I mean? Like, I started, and I said, this is what I want to do. I want to make gold. Mm. I want that opportunity. I got up, I made that opportunity. So I started doing a little bit of acting. I got I got recognition on TV, um, broadcast TV, being the loving um, um, chicken gentleman. So basically that started off my portfolio. And eventually that, I started working with other people. And now, in this particular moment, I'm a producer. So. Were you driven by sort of lifestyle? Did you want to be rich? Or was it just, you just loved acting? I love acting. I don't care about riches. I know I'm going to make money. Like, if tomorrow morning if I made half a million pounds, I work for that. Because at the end of the day, like, money is rewards. Living life is better. You know what I mean? Like, if I was to make money for doing nothing, I'll give it back. Because at the end of the day, like, what am I going to do with that money? What? I can buy a nice house. I can buy the best suit in the world. I could, I, I could be on a yacht if I wanted to. I could have taken that route because that's the other side to the mentality. But no, but I want to work for it. But particularly if you come from the streets where you've got nothing, yeah. um, a lot of people would assume that what you, you value more than anything is not going back to the streets, which does require money, doesn't it? So yeah, you end up being driven by money. Yeah, of course. You're driven by money, but to make money, you've got to have a goal. 
you got uh, Bill Gates, like the same story of Bill Gates, like he has a goal. For him to make money, he has to have a goal. But you've got your goal, you want to be in acting, but you've also shown that you're really flexible and yeah. able to wing it by, you know, working out where you're going to sleep. You're going to sleep on the bus, yeah. you're going to go for auditions. Yeah. And you're going to be a nightclub promoter, which yeah. wasn't your goal, presumably. Yeah, it wasn't my goal. <laughs> I'm, 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 what is it? I'm very flexible in anything, like, to be honest. Like, I've got, I, I think East, a lot of East London people have the gift of the gap. So when I'm communicating with people, I'm very, I'm very, like, warmthful. I'm very lovable, you know what I mean? So, like, like I think my friend, or I'm, uh, like, my friend asked me to, um, to come in for the interview he said oh we've got this job for you sales executive i've never done sales i've only done a little bit of sales and this was like big branded job um nice office etc so i went in <laughs> and we were talking we're discussing he said oh what do you do and i said yeah i'm a musician his eyes lights up and there's like three of them there there's the managing director there's a uh, office um assistant etc etc that bring me in and she's and he was like you know what, yeah, I want you to sing. I did ask him, like, I did ask him, like, a few, like, weeks down the line, why did you ask me to sing? <laughs> he said, because I prefer somebody that's natural. Because when you're speaking to people on the phone, mm-hmm. phone it's about, it's about um, quality, not quantity, mm-hmm. if you understand what I mean. So he asked me to sing on that particular day, and that taught me a lesson. Someone that's natural that doesn't drive for money mm-hmm. is more successful. Authentic, being yourself. Very authentic. Yeah. You are very authentic because once you get money, you then become down to earth and you know how to use it. Um, so what? Describe where do you live now? I live in Poplar. I have my own, eventually got my own, um, like I'm, I'm renting from council, but eventually I'm going to buy it. But I have my own little um, one bedroom and flat. So yeah. pretty, pretty cool and awesome. Yeah. And what sort of work are you doing? I'm at the moment producing my own stuff, so I'm, I'm still acting. I have my agent. I've done a few things, uh, so but I want to like go into more um, production, more co-star stuff, and uh, more lead stuff. Eventually, uh, move back to America. To be honest, that's it. So your a lot, you know, your achievement in large um, part is shown by this flat, right? You're you're independent. You're doing what you want to do, mm-hmm. and you're not living at home or no. On a bus? No, 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 no. Eventually, <laughs> let's just say I'm not living at home on a bus, but my mum's house is like five minutes away. <laughs> but I am very independent. I'm, I've always been independent. And, and, and I don't, if, I'm, if, if, like, if I move to like France or something, I'm mm. always going to be independent. Or Germany, I'm always going to be independent. I'll eventually find myself a mm. place. It's just me. It's my drive. I'm, and the whole story of it, like, I don't panic when I'm doing something, when I make choices, there's choices because of choices. It's not I make choices because I want this. There's choices because I know them choices are going to get me. It's, it's, it's a reward system mm. here. You're going to you have to make profit somewhere. So instead of thinking about money and thinking about this, I think about the longer goal. What am I going to do in the long term? Mm. If I want to be a multi-million in the long term, how am I going to get there? Or how am I going to be the best actor? It's just... This is how I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to get it. So you'll buy your flat next, you'll go into production, move to Hollywood, presumably? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I've always wanted to go to LA. <laughs> <laughs> Tell a lie, but I, yeah, eventually I will move to like LA or um, um, Georgia or Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, so I can I'm, see that you're going to do that, you, that's your plan, right? That's my plan, that is that's exactly <laughs> how did you know, that's my plan. <laughs> yeah, of course, that is my plan to move to LA. Um, live out in LA for a little while. And you've probably done the hardest bit already, haven't you? Moving from that sort of club promoter bus life to having an apartment and getting regular work. Yeah, of course, that is the hardest bit. That was, that was the most difficult part. But then there's still challenges to come. So I'm guessing um, the hard bit's gone, but I still need to fight for what I want, to be honest. So what would you say to someone who's living on the streets listening to this? And they just can't see a way out. You gotta be very positive. Don't give up. Don't listen to anyone, because people can lead mislead you. Because there's always whisperers. Uh, there's always people whispering in your ear. So you gotta be so strong that even a brick 
can't take you down. If you understand that terminology, it's basically like you need to be solid. So go for what you want and keep pushing. Keep like keep completing your challenges. Like write goals in your diary. Um, uh, test yourself. Um, say your goals over and over and over again. Um, like Les Brown says. So um, make it possible. Like because if you stick with the impossible, you're still going to be at square one. But still be flexible as well and take opportunities as they come up. Yeah. So I presume you don't need your goals to be that focused, that you only want to work in that theatre doing that role. That doesn't work, but you need quite a broad goal. Yeah, of course you do. Like, if you if you can't get into the theatre projects, oh, you go into TV. If you can't get into TV, you make your own films and eventually you get into TV. Um, and what's the fear that drives you? It's a question I always ask everyone. But what, do you, what makes you keep going? Um... Mm. What are you f- afraid of going back to? I'm afraid my goals are a little bit too big. So you're afraid of not achieving your goals? But I'm wondering what pushes you to... What pushes me? Yeah, what pushes you to keep going? Um, leaving the legacy. Uh, afraid of going back. Afraid of um, moving back to square one. Where's square one? Square one is basically back... On the bus. On the bus, yeah. I'm guessing every successful person will agree. I, I'm afraid of going back to square one. It's like when you make money, I'm, just, I'm afraid of losing it all, to be honest. I'm guessing I've adopted that um, mentality. So that's what, uh, that, that's what drives me. I work really, really hard. Um, also, because my goals are so big, I'm, I'm scared, sometimes scared. If, you're, if your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. I'm scared that I'll get to a certain point and I'll be misleaded. Honestly, like, this is the truth. But I am scared of going back. I don't want to go back. I prefer prefer to go five steps forward, not ten steps back. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Solomon, thank you so much for speaking to me. You're welcome. (laughs)